To calibrate a pump with 10 mm cyclone, first be sure the pumps are charged. If the pumps have not been charged within the past 48 hours, you must recharge the pumps prior to sampling. Start the pumps so they can be warming up. They need to run at least three minutes before you begin the calibration. Be sure to verify the pump flow rates in an area where you are not exposing the media and equipment to the contaminant, like an office setting. All pumps have the lab calibration information on the pump calibration data sheets provided. To set up the cyclone assembly for calibration, remove the colored nibs from each end of the cassette. Do not remove the threaded grit pot on the bottom of the cyclone. Open the plastic calibration jar. Insert a cassette into the bottom plate of the metal cyclone holder, wagon wheel pattern up. Place the cassette in the cyclone by extending the springs of the metal holder. Close the top of the calibration jar. Then, attach the tubing to the pump. Attach the second tubing from the jar to the rotometer. The order of the components for calibration is pump, long piece of tubing to jar inlet, calibration jar, short section of tubing, filter media in place in the cyclone holder, door Oliver 10 millimeter cyclone, long section of tubing from the jar outlet, and rotometer. With everything sitting on a level flat surface, check the ball float in the rotometer. Wait for the rotometer ball to stabilize prior to adjusting. Adjust the flow rate by turning the flow adjustment screw on the top of the pump until the rotometer indicates the desired flow. Be sure to take your rotometer reading at eye level and use the center of the float for the value. The required flow rate range for respirable or silica sampling is 1.7 liters per minute. Verify the flow rate against the pump calibration data sheet. Add a new sampling cassette to the cyclone holder you will use for field monitoring. Remember, a field blank should be collected for each sample set and should accompany the monitor during all periods except actual sampling. For more detailed information, watch our Field Blanks video. After sampling, remove the cassette and reinstall the nibs and wipe off any dust accumulated on the cyclone prior to shipment back to the laboratory. Place the cassettes in the Ziploc bag for shipment to Galson Laboratories. After completing the sample, a post-calibration must be performed on the pump. Perform the post-calibration the same way you did the pre-calibration, but do not make any adjustments. Just record the flow rate on the pump calibration sheet. The pre- and post rates should be within 10% of each other. If they are, average the flow rates to determine the flow rate to be used to calculate the air volume. Multiply the flow rate, LPM, by the total time sampled in minutes to get the air volume in liters. Record the total liters on the field data sheets and the chain of custody. If the post sampling rates are not within 10%, OSHA considers the samples screening samples, and if the analytical results show high levels, resampling is recommended. All rotometers are calibrated against a primary standard every month. This calibration formula is located on the side of the field rotometer. Take the average rotometer reading and plug it into the calibration formula found on the side of the rotometer to determine your actual flow rate. Then, complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the turnaround time of your samples. Remove the pink copy and keep this for your records. Send the white and yellow copies in with the samples to the lab in the large Ziploc bag. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH live chat 303-566-7000.